This is Patrice Wenling of Global Medical News Network reporting from the annual meeting of the American Academy of Hospice and Palliative Medicine in Austin, Texas. I'm speaking with Dr. Amy Abernathy of Duke University Medical Center who has presented results from the international Eau de Breathe trial showing that palliative oxygen was no better than ordinary air delivered by nasal cannula in relieving dyspnea in non or mildly hypoxemic patients with terminal illness. Dr. Abernathy, were you surprised by the results? I think the part that was most surprising to me was that oxygen really didn't seem to add much um, to medical air. I wasn't surprised that a medical gas improved dyspnea, and I think we know that from the dog who hangs his head out the window and you know, gets the sense of air moving and rushing past his face and um, feels better, and we see this um, clinically uh, many times with patients um, who have a fan or other ways of getting air moving past the face. But I was surprised by the fact that oxygen didn't add anything over air alone. There were some patients who responded. In whom would you recommend the use of oxygen therapy? So what we saw is the person who had the most severe dyspnea had the most dramatic response. We were measuring dyspnea response on a 0 to 10 scale, and most people started off with a dyspnea level of around 4 on that 0 to 10 scale. When people had a level of 7 to 10 on that scale, then the response was most dramatic, and it improved by about 2 and a half on that 0 to 10 scale. And could you also comment on the implications of your findings, particularly given the cost of delivering oxygen therapy? Yeah, certainly cost and the question of whether or not this was a beneficial intervention was a main motivator for this study. We know that palliative oxygen, in other words, oxygen being given to patients when their partial pressure of oxygen, their PaO2, does not meet normal long-term oxygen therapy guidelines, is a major driver of hospice referrals. And it's also a major driver of oxygen costs in a number of countries. For example, in Canada, it's 24% of all of their oxygen therapy costs. And the results are very important because it calls into question whether or not we should continue to pay for palliative oxygen, especially if patients aren't benefiting from it. One of the most important pieces that this study showed us was that patients who were going to benefit benefited quickly within the first 24 hours or so, and that that benefit was irrespective of what kind of gas it was. So if a person's not getting benefit, it's okay to stop the treatment. Um, what might the implications be on, uh, of your findings on current recommendations? So one of the first things we need to do is go back and um, speak directly to the guidelines groups so that we help um, the guidelines groups incorporate this information into their guidelines about the management of, of uh, um, dyspnea at the end of life. What we would expect is that palliative oxygen will have more information in terms of the evidence base supporting its use for patients with severe dyspnea, that it will be questionable whether or not we should use palliative oxygen or medical air for patients with moderate levels of dyspnea and the concept of stopping it when it doesn't work needs to be one of the first things put on the table. Thank you very much, Dr. Abernathy, for discussing your work. This is Patrice Wenling for Global Medical News Network.